Hey there everybody, um, confession to be made here, I suppose I should hold it this way up. I started doing this um, Aguacuri uh, hacker at the same time as the Wildcats, again don't like wasting paint, so it's just using excess dark grey. and uh, So I've already blocked, and the golden brown as well, so I've already blocked in the hair, um, base coated that in and also the dark grey areas. And I'm just going to start dropping in some heavy violet. Okay, catch you in a mo. Okay, it's all done. There, you can just see the purple base coating. Again, some of this is going to go lighter, some of it's going to go darker. And uh, you'll be able to see what happens in the not too distant future. Catch you in a mo. So, moving on with the Aguacalus hacker. Um, which has been checking out sort of armulus designs. I'm probably going to end up, to begin with at least, using it as a proxy for a, a Tom Gus gun hacker. Um, at least in 300 point games. I've literally got a, a bare minimum, if you like, staff to be able to make a 300 point list. Um, And it's because I bought three different armies, and each of which basically can put together a 300 point list. All of my lists include tags. Um, again, as I said before, these aren't really cost effective in a small scale like this. I think uh, in a 400 point ITS kind of army, um, you might be able to make a tag work, but. The problem is, they don't provide enough orders, and for the points cost, they're not actually tough enough, and then when they're going to invariably receive a shed load of firepower, and when they go down, they put you on a big chunk of the way towards your retreat requirements, um, which is problematic. So, I can certainly see why a lot of people don't seem to use them in tournament armies, and it's a big shame for me because I really love those miniatures and I would really like them to be viable. Um, I think it'd be really great if they don't necessarily need to make them cheaper, but maybe if they made them provide more orders than they do, because pretty much 80 points worth of cheap light infantry it's more likely they're not going to outperform um, this sort of 83, 83 point tag, you know, points for points actually and it's not because of the unit quality, it's because of the amount of orders you get if you've only got one tag Fighting ten dudes, you want tags getting like one order and a lieutenant order, I suppose. And uh, your opponent is getting a shed load of orders. Um, it's no good, really. Uh, I'm just going to do the straps of the backpack in grey because I'm going to bring them up to white. Now the backpack itself I'm going to do is the sort of lime green. I think overall this Corregidor force is going to be known as the green backs. Um, not, not for the monies, but uh, for Colonel Von Greenback in Danger Mass. I don't know whether my nomads are goodies or baddies. In fact, one of the things I like about this whole game, the, the background of it all, is... Um, it has the quality of no one is particularly pleasant or amazing. Um, you know, you, I, I don't feel a great passion for anybody. Um, I think I'm going to go. I don't know. There's more tags involved with these guys. That's the thing. I won't be Pano. Hate Pano. Um, Christian scumbags. Uh, stupid knightly orders and super high tech OP. Get um, always going to side with an underdog of some nature. I think 
I mean, if I could, I'd quite like to do an Ariadne force, which was like, um, uh, I'd quite like it to be dog faces and antipodes, and do it as like a, a force that doesn't really exist in the army list, um, do it as a uh, some dog faces have broken have broken away from Ariadna effectively and uh, united with the Antipodes and are trying to get in touch with O12 and uh, get them recognised as the natives of the planet and therefore owners of the planet um, with maybe some concessions for the Ariadnes but no concessions for the uh, the other foreign powers and dog power, dog faces in this respect could attempt to seize power in Ariadna, but you know I know of course Belly has um, a lot planned for the game, so but I just quite like that as an idea, uh, some sort of kind of freedom fighting force, and I'm probably going to do some kind of design some custom scenarios, and I'll, I'll get them on the channel as and when I have them all ready to go so yeah it's just a few little details which will be either getting knocked back to black or not knocked up to white on the aquacolies uh, I'll catch you ok so I'm just dabbing in the eyes um, I am doing this this early on Mostly because if I mess it up, it's easier to cut back in. I can't even really see. I'm trying to keep this in camera shot, and you can see it's uh, not so easy. So either way, I'm just going to block in the eyes. See, I've totally made a Bosch job out of it, but um, it'll be absolutely fine because later on, when I first cut over skin colour, I'll cut it back in. I might have to cut the blob the eyes in again in a bit, but um, yeah. So, with this one, I'm just gonna move on to the black green paint um, so yeah as you can no doubt see as ever keeping to colour screen uh, colour scheme uh, keeping everything bound together um, she's just going to get the green power up here and uh, Green backpack. Yeah, one of the things I like about base coating is you just you can uh, you can see where the miniature's going. If you see what I mean, like uh, it identifies all the key areas and shows. And so, I mean, you, you can work. Do you work this way? I strongly suggest you work from the sort of recesses forward. Um, you can work in a sort of do this, highlight it up, get it up to the colour you want it to be, um, move on to the next bit. Um, don't like to work that way myself. I'd like to see the miniature developing. Yeah, it can be awkward, but especially if you end up with a recess that you want to get to, but it's really difficult. Um, also, this is partly for your sake, so that you can uh, clearly see all the layers kind of at the same time. 
wouldn't necessarily paint like this. Like I might leave that till last and then do all of that at the same time. But for the sake of this, I'm not going to do it this way. Um, there's an infinite number of ways of paint, right? And you've just got to find one that suits you, really. Um, also, if you're anything like me, probably chop and change quite a lot. I mean, I, I change. I try to be consistent with each uh, model I'm painting, or each army that I'm painting. Um, otherwise you lose that unified feel um, okay should have done that grey I still have some grey here so I'm just gonna put this in grey because I'm gonna want that to come up to white also I find when I'm base cutting it it's like it reveals little things like that I missed and um, it really bugs me when I get to the end of the miniature and I've missed something that's really obvious. Um, also, I'm using the box cover as a point of reference. So if I see something that Angel has painted and how he's painted it, um, because the miniature is finished, it enables me to identify more easily um, how I ought to, or like which bits of the miniature are what. Um, personally, I wouldn't try and copy what he's done, um, obviously because it'll never be as good, and so I'll always be dissatisfied with it. Um, but also because. Uh, I like to do, I like to have my own colour schemes, I like my armies to be my armies rather than uh, an imitation of somebody else's armies, which is odd coming from historical, in this album, or maybe because of historical, in historical we kind of, you're always copying uniforms because that's what they looked like, but um, that's always what I've liked, I think, about sci-fi or what have you, I like the freedom it gives you, I like a bit of choice, uh, I like a bit of variety, I'm just going to do a couple of little details on the boots as well, like, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to make it overly complicated for myself, well, I might be doing exactly that, but, but I am trying to make it, um, I want my nose to be pretty. And, and in the case of the ladies, I want them to be in sort of good looking, thoughtful, more like slightly more feminine colour ranges within the armies. Um, selected colour scheme. So even though it's all green and purple you notice there's a lot more green on the intruder than there is on the Agricolis here. And ultimately the purple on the intruder will remain very, very dark. Um, Try and sort of keep it at the masculine end of the scale. Whereas the ladies will end up with a lot more Mm, lighter colours, and I'm just putting these fastenings in the green at the moment. They'll probably get picked out in a lighter tone right at the end. Maybe even just blocked in in a grey or white. So, yeah, I'm just going to finish boshing this in. And then I will get on to the skin. Also, I need to get in around a collar with dark grey. 
Is that something I missed out? Oopsie. Yeah, so I'll be back with you in a moment. It's finally just moving into the flash tones for the hacker. And I think I'm going to make this a. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to make her a black girl. I know I've given her blonde hair, but I might take that up to more like yellow hair. I might make it green. I haven't actually made up my mind yet. And then that can all change easily enough. The yellow base I'll, I'll definitely head towards. Um, green or yellow, but having said that, I could go towards purple for the hair. But with the purple going on everywhere else, then me. Um, also, quite nice for the contrast. I'm just using heavy sienna for the base colour again. Uh, using the extra pegs for this. Just to um not just for pigment density really. Um like I want these kind of layers to be pretty dense. Um, and yeah, I've overspilled a little bit, but that's fine. It's always fine. Blocking the hands first, and I'm just gonna endeavour to show you what I mean about um, easier to cut the face in with the eyes already painted in. Now, as ever with this kind of stuff, just take your time, don't rush. Um, I'll probably use the drags of this brown to. Um, add some brown to the camouflage token ninja for the intruder as well because um, I am kind of painting things in parallel partly convenience, partly um, <sighs> I'm a little bit of a rush I suppose more of a rush than I ought to be but this is just the first stuff I just want Done, I'm already playing games, you know. So, most of her face, I'm just gonna block in beneath the eyes first. Yeah. I'm hoping this is in focus, it's hard to keep it in focus. I keep on moving and the focal range is very sort of narrow so if I'm here it's out of focus, if I'm here it's out of focus um, I'm just trying to keep it in the sweet spot so I hope you can see so I've cut in the bottom edge of the face I'm trying to get that in as neatly as tightly as possible now I'm just going to cut in the forehead I'm going to have to cut in a little bit of hair at some point and to try to get you see what I mean now I've been able to cut in eyes pretty neatly and I will endeavour to not mess them up again now um, although no doubt I will and then I have to redo them and then recut in uh, one of the joys of female characters it's much easier to redo the eyes later because you can cut in around the eyes with colours and its makeup um, and certainly but I'm also trying to just get right into the neck here now I did forget I do need to block in some of the heavy grey um, for the leather, uh, which I will do right away because um, then she is base coated 
And I'm going to commit travesty, I'm afraid. And I'm going to... I've got a clean brush. I only need like a tiny dab of this. So I am taking it straight out of the pot. Putting the lid back on the pot straight away. Because I just want to get in. I'm probably going to make a total mess. Just want to get right in here. And... Knock this out. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. One base coated. Maybe she's just going to be a super tan Brazilian chick. Maybe she's going to be a black chick. I'm not sure. I suppose I should also just do that piece of hair. Um, maybe in the future I will. It's important you remember your colour palettes for this as well. Um, this is another reason for deciding on uniforms. Again, I'm just getting a bit of rough paint on the brush from there, naughty me. Um, keeping your colour range is consistent is really important. Now, I don't know if you can even see this, but the hair line is minuscule. In fact, I've cut this is slightly into the forehead and I'm just going to try and not cut back. There's, there's that one dot sort of here, I won't do. It's now a battle between having enough paint on the brush for the job. Not so much that you end up blobbing it. The other thing is, of course, I'm looking at this through my eyes, whereas the camera's looking at this through a lens, so the camera can actually see much more clearly what I'm doing than I can. Which is frustrating. Sorry, one last little tire point. Tiny down with a heavy grate, which is just uh, on this hand here, where it's there shouldn't be any. Just a box in where it's not shiny. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This will get highlighted later. So yeah, there you go. One. Base coated Alguacili. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Alguacili or Alguacil or Algua. I think it's Alguacili. No, it's Alguacil. Alguacil hacker. Don't even know the names of my own dudes. Do that. But this one's for the ladies. Uh, at some point, I might. Um, just actually put in some green on these cuffs. Fact. Uh, the reason being, um, yeah, that's actually com log. I've completely missed the com log. Oopsie. So it's kind of important. Also, that means I've missed out on luminescence. This isn't quite base coated. This is why you have to check, double check and this. Again, it's really quite useful to have um, points of reference. And I'm just glancing over there, and I'm noticing that she has um, multicolored cuffs on his on angels work so I'm just going to block these in green and then I will run um, a purple edging so they're like the opposite of the boots 
And that's primarily the cars. Mm. I have pretty um pretty much I've got as much purple on this image as I really want. And I don't want it to go too far into the realms of purple, you know. Um, I am blocking the whole thing in green at the moment and I will cut the purple over the top. Uh, primary gang, because I'm using these opaque paints. So yeah, I keep on saying she's done and she's not. Sorry about this, yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to be very naughty and then take the paint straight from the pot. I don't need very much. Don't do this. Always get the paint out, put it out. Now, if I make this match of boots, the tip of the cuff closest to the hand. But I'm not, I'm going to take the furthest edge, so I'm going to take the back edge. It's just going to become a purple edge on the hand. Okay, let's just try to. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a little dab. But it's literally. The smallest dab I can manage. And sorry if I'm rushing this a bit. It's been. A long few weeks actually. Um, I've been really enjoying it, but it's kind of exhausting. How sometimes, even at the weekends, I've been going like I don't know, ten hour slots. My thumb went numb for a couple of days from doing the. Uh, I don't know if it's available. Well, it should be available by now. Um, Marking up the hexes on the rooftops of the H blocks. I don't know what it was. I think I must have just uh, too much pressure um, for uh, too sustained a period. But either way, after six, I don't know. It was like three or four hours it took to do all. Of Maybe well, in the first draft in the morning, not to me like a little bit longer because it was like you know working out but um once I got down to it and I was just boshing through them I think it took about three hours four hours but it press quite hard I don't know by the way my thumb went numb and uh, it wasn't until I don't know it was a day later it was sort of still a little bit numb this morning which is two days later but uh what the hell, it's all for a good cause, right? And then, um, I am... I, I suppose I'm trying to show that... You can... It takes time. That's for sure. But you can get into these things without being too expensive, because... I mean, I'm not really comparing the two things, so don't sue me, but... You look at GW, okay, you get more miniatures of a lower quality for the same amount of money, and I think you can pick up a viable, like, tournament-worthy 300-400 point army of this for a lot less than you could pick up a tournament worthy GWI. I think with GW you're looking at spending I don't know, probably four hundred quid on troops alone on like your forces. Um whereas this I think hundred, hundred and fifty quid you could have pretty much uh, any force you wanted. 
um, you know, provided you plan carefully and you actually sat down and worked out the game a little bit. So ultimately, I would think that this is a cheaper game to get into, just less miniatures for the same amount of money. But if you like the metal, which I do, so there you go. Uh, hope you like in this. And that's my Al Guaquil hacker. He's probably going to pretend to be a uh, Tunguska Interventor, but you know, that's how it goes. Okay, cheers everybody. Take care and I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye bye.